Hey gang, welcome to another Electronics and More video. In this video, I want to show you another great product. This one here is made by NOCO, an American company which has been in business for over a hundred years. This model is a GB40 jump starter. It uses lithium ion cells, so it's much more compact compared to the older style sealed lead acid battery jump starters. And this one here can be used with virtually all cars, vans, and trucks, up to six liters or three liters for diesel. This is a 1,000 amp unit and it supplies just over 7,000 joules for starting up the engine. If you happen to have a vehicle which has a larger engine than you see here, a heavy duty truck, or a vehicle that has two batteries placed in parallel, then you're definitely going to want to get the GB70 model that supplies 2,000 amps and around 14,000 joules. If you'd like to jump start heavy equipment, used for construction, then you're going to want the model GB150. That model supplies 4,000 amps and well over 20,000 joules for starting those heavy duty engines. In addition to having the ability to jump start vehicles, with this particular model here, you can jump start up to 20 times on a single charge. There's also two LEDs on the front of the unit and there's seven different modes for the LEDs, varying brightnesses, SOS, as well as a very bright emergency strobe. So if you're going to use this unit to jump start a boat, the one I tested was an inboard. It had two V6 Crusader engines. One battery was very weak and no problem at all starting up that boat. The good thing is it's spark proof and you cannot reverse the connections because the circuitry of the unit prevents you from doing that. You do not want to have sparks, especially when jump starting a boat, because inside the bilge area there can be explosive vapors and you do not want to ignite those vapors. The company sells 12 volt models as well as 24. In addition to being able to jump start your vehicle, your motorcycle, or your boat, you also have an outlet right here for USB up to 2.1 amps, so you'll also have the ability to operate and charge virtually all your USB devices. This unit is charged using USB. So included with the unit, which you'll see in a minute, is a small accessory socket USB adapter. You plug it into the other port where it says USB in, and it allows you to charge this unit. Even though it's a higher voltage on the clamps, the internal circuitry, more than likely, using a highly efficient boost converter, converts the five volts DC into a much higher voltage to charge the internal lithium ion batteries. And let's take a look at this side before I open up the box. And right here you can see the traditional type of jump starter, the one that has a sealed lead acid battery weighing around 18 pounds. And this one weighs only around 2.3 pounds, small enough to fit right inside your glove box. And the good thing about having lithium ion batteries inside this unit is the self discharge rate is extremely extremely slow compared to a sealed lead acid battery. As a result the charge will last a lot longer when you charge up the unit. Everything you're looking at is included with the unit. It was nicely packed inside this box. One more thing to note there is a one year hassle free limited warranty and free lifetime user support. The user guide and important product information guide both are written in several different languages. You get this very nice bag to place everything in and then you can place it inside your glove box. The good thing is it's extremely small. Now here's the unit in the palm of my hand. You can see it fits very nicely. Here's a 12 volt output. Pull this plug off right here. And this cable connects. You can see it's square and round right here, square and round. Jumper cables are very well made and it appears to be solid copper or, or an alloy. It does not appear to be one of the cheap clamps where you would normally see it starting to rust when the plating wears off. So these do look very nice. See the clamped area there and that is 8 gauge wire. This is how you charge the unit 
plugs right into your cigarette lighter or accessory socket connect it to right here and then this goes into the unit now it takes around three or four hours to charge up the unit fully and you can also use the Blitzwolf solar panel which I showed in my other video for charging USB devices it will also charge this up in around three hours so if you have no way to charge it you can always use the Sun to charge it up the other side here it says USB out and USB in this is where you charge it, right here. Let me make sure you can see that. Mini USB, and this is where you would plug your phone in to be able to operate it or other USB devices. Now, when you charge this up, you're going to notice a white LED on right here, and over here it's going to show you the indication of the charge. So let's turn this on. You can see it's red, red orange and green is a hundred percent when you receive it it's going to be around twenty five to fifty percent so you're going to plug it in allow it to charge until the green LED is on if you want to turn on the light you push this button right here close these ends push this back three different levels of light high medium low then you have flashing SOS and then you have strobe it is power off so that's very useful to have especially if you break down at night you want to be able to let people know that you're there so you don't get hit by an oncoming car when you have a need to jump start a battery simply open up where it says 12 volt out take the jumper cables Make sure the end is right, the square is over here, and you can see the arrow facing up. Insert it, and that's ready to go. You take the positive, you're going to connect it to the positive post of the battery, and then you can take the negative and connect it to either the negative of the battery, or what I like to do because it's safer, is connect it to the chassis or vehicle ground. Any bolt on the engine will work. Once the unit's turned on, if the clamps are properly connected to the battery, you're going to see the power indicator LED. These will go in a sequence, and you're going to see this white LED right over here, indicating that it's properly connected. If the clamps are backwards, if this is on the positive and that's on the negative, you're going to not see this white LED, and you're going to see a red error, or right here it says caution, that LED will come on, indicating it is backwards. Turn the unit off, connect the clamps properly, and then push the power button. Once the power button's been pressed and you see the confirmation that it is in boost mode, ready to go, that says the clamps are connected properly, go inside the vehicle and try starting the engine. If the engine does not immediately start up, wait 20 to 30 seconds and then try again. It should start right up. Now the circuitry inside this unit, if the battery is below 2 volts, which is very, very weak, it may not detect the battery. And the only way to get this to jump start the battery, you're going to have to push the power button, and then you're going to push this other button that's red. You're going to push that down, and that's going to be a manual override for the safety circuitry in this unit. So make sure the cables are connected properly, and then... Once you do that, you can push the red button, wait about 30 seconds, and then start the vehicle. This is truly something that everybody should carry in their vehicle, so you do not have to rely on anybody giving you a jump start using jumper cables in the event your battery goes dead. In the event that once you're done jump starting the vehicle, you forget to turn this off, it does have an auto off circuit. Standby current is extremely low, so after a few hours, this will automatically turn off. Let's take a look at the back. Lithium ion, 24 watt hour, 2.1 amps charging current, and you can get 2.1 amps to the USB port, which will charge just about all your devices. And if you needed 12 volts to power something using the clamps, 
you can also get one amp off of these clamps. Because it is so compact and easy to use, this is something I would highly recommend that most, if not all, people carry in the glove box of their vehicles, especially if you have a wife, girlfriend, or daughter. In the event they're coming home at night and their vehicle battery goes dead, the last thing you want to do is worry about them getting a jump start from somebody that they do not know. As a result of carrying one of these, they will not have to interact with any strangers to get their car started up. I did place a link in the video description area to this product as well as others by this company. So be sure to check them out. Now the same cable that's used to charge right here, all right, plugs in your accessory socket. This plugs into the unit. This would be USB in and the curve on top. Plug that in the accessory socket and in a few hours it will be charged. Over here is where you would plug in the phone. Now my phone happens to use this connector. It's a Samsung. So I'll pop this out, plug this in, and I'm going to plug this into my phone and it should say charging. Here we go. There you go. And right over here, I hope you can see it, showing a lightning bolt where it's charging and it says 53%. Let me see if it still charges with the power off. Nope. Alright, so in order to charge, power on. There you go. And power off. Now let's go outside and connect it up to the battery. Take the negative clamp, negative terminal, positive clamp, positive terminal. You're going to turn on the unit right here. And you can see it's flashing and it's also clicking. That LED is on, white, indicating you're ready to go inside the vehicle and start the engine. Now let me show you how it looks when it's connected backwards. And as you can see, positive is now on the negative, negative is now on the positive. You have the red caution indicating LED, letting you know that the terminals are in reverse. Even with the cables backwards, if you push the button, it's not going to come on right here. And you can see this isn't flashing and there's no more clicking coming from the unit. So you can't connect it backwards. Disconnect that. As I mentioned earlier, if the battery voltage is way down, below 2 volts, when you push this button right here to turn it on, you may not see the cycling and that LED may not be on. In that case, as long as the clamps are in the correct position, you can disable all the safety features by pushing this button right here. When you push that button, it looks exactly like this. Hold for three seconds. And now you're on manual override. And now you're back to normal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.